This video is sponsored by Audible. Hey guys, I got a haircut. I don't know how to style it. Now in my life and times as a high school English TA, as a teaching intern with a math teacher, and you know, as a student in the public school system for the past 14 years, I've definitely learned a lot about how to deal with great, but also what's a negative adjective I could use without getting myself demonetized. Um, some not great teachers. Before we get started, let's actually think about whether this is a bad teacher, AKA whether this video's advice will actually apply to your situation. Now, I know you didn't come here to be preached to about how you should have such empathy and being the bigger person in a situation, but teachers are human just like everybody else. So treating them with empathy and taking the higher road on your end can usually help alleviate a lot of uncomfortable situations before they actually become bad. And similarly, having a teacher who has high expectations for you doesn't mean they're bad either, as long as they're actually adequately supporting you in meeting their difficult standards. That was a lot of me vaguely preaching and uh, let's just sum it up into a quick little litmus test. First, am I the problem? I know self-reflection is hard and the answer to this is probably no because otherwise why would you be watching this video? Question two, do I understand what is happening in this class? Three, did they make a fair attempt to help when I asked for it? And four, did that attempt to help actually, you know, do anything to help. Without further ado, let's get started on the main five types of bad teachers that I've encountered generally. Some teachers can fall into many of these categories or they just might be slightly different, but five general categories and how to deal with each one. Type one is the disorganized teacher. Usually their lessons and lectures are just hard to follow, the class always goes off track, and they might just seem really flustered all of the time. This is usually common with new teachers or those who have a ton of outside obligations, like a coach or someone who's working on a higher degree. I think the best thing you could do with this teacher is to ask specific questions about the things you don't understand. And not just like a, I don't get it, please explain it to me again, like general vague question, because then you'll get the same disorganized spiel that you got the first time. But you know, a very specific question, like cite a specific part of the textbook. And once you get your answer, just repeat it back and try to clarify whether you actually understand it correctly. And if this still doesn't help, I recommend you supplement your learning with a different resource that is much more well-organized. Like most classes will have a textbook, so you can just read through that and have that be the framework within which you can, you know, learn everything you need to know and add in some extra knowledge that your teacher might be offering. You could also try a tutor or maybe friends in the class who took it previously with a different teacher, or if the textbook doesn't feel adequate, you can try to find some outside reading. And speaking of outside reading, one great resource to check out for that is today's sponsor, Audible. For instance, I've been listening to the book Words on the Move by the Columbia professor and linguist John McWhorter, and it's been a great supplement to my linguistics class. Not that my professor is disorganized, he's great, but like it also helps to save me some time because I can just listen while doing something I'd already be doing anyways, like walking to the grocery store. Every month, Audible members get one free audiobook and full access to the Plus catalog, which just includes a ton of stuff that you don't have to like buy individually, including select audiobooks, podcasts, Audible originals, guided fitness and meditation programs, sleep tracks for better rest, a lot of other cool stuff. If this sounds interesting to you, you can use my custom link or text code, which I will put on the screen right now and in the description to get a 30 day free Audible trial for free. And if you're watching this pretty soon after it's posted, the President's Day event is happening. One of the best deals of the year, you can get your first six months for only $9.95 per month. So once again, link in description, text code, yeah. Moving on, our next type of bad teacher is the uh, head empty go bonk, lack of knowledge type. It just seems clear that they don't know that much about the subject, or at the very least, they're not choosing to tell you very much about the subject. Often this happens when one, teaching wasn't really their first choice of career, so they're not really putting that much effort into learning the things that are necessary to know, or they've just given up on teaching the stuff that's actually harder, but also necessary. And this kind of issue with the teacher can generally be addressed by asking them questions. 
if you cover a certain topic in class or you come across something pretty interesting in the textbook and you want to know more about it, ask them questions. I'm sure they'd be interested to know that somebody cares about the subject and likes it as much as they hopefully do since they signed up to teach it. Like I find that generally teachers know a lot about their subjects, like they usually have a whole freaking bachelor's degree in it, but they just feel like the kids don't want to know so they just hold it in. But if they come across someone who genuinely seems interested and somewhat knowledgeable about it, they'll usually tell you everything you want and need to know and more. But if this doesn't really work out, like they're not just the type who's holding back information because they're tired, but they just literally don't seem to know more than you do as a student who just reads a textbook, um, that's kind of a problem that you can't really fix on your end besides just learning from a different resource. Our next type, I'm going to nickname Meanie Weenie, just because I can. Um, but this is the kind of teacher who is just mean to everybody. Even if you're getting a good grade, having a person who is super mean to you every single day just isn't a fun experience and can definitely disrupt your interest in and learning about the subject. What I would do is just try to be nice to them. I know it's kind of hard to be nice to someone who is actively bitter and nasty towards you, but Going back to what I said at the beginning, most teachers are in this profession because they want to do it. But sometimes when someone's been in this field for too long, maybe seen too many horrible children in situations, they like internalize that instead of letting go of it and start to become really disillusioned and just mean and closed off. So if you can uh, try to get them to like you by demonstrating interest in the things they like, maybe the subject they teach or a hobby they express that they are into, or just generally being kind to them. Maybe you can make yourself stand out as a one of the good ones who is actually tolerable and then they'll be nicer to you. Or if that doesn't work, whatever, at least you tried. What I would do instead is just put your head down and be too smart to fail. Like know the material, know it so well that no matter what, they can't bully you out of getting the grade and the knowledge that you need in order to just move on to the next class. I know that's a lot easier said than done. I have a lot of study tips on my channel. It's basically what my channel is about if you would like some advice on how to do that. But you know, as a very non-confrontational person, I personally think that's the best way forward. Related to the previous mini weenie teacher, our next type is the one who plays favorites and you're definitely not one of them. This is the kind of teacher who like randomly picks a few chosen one golden people at the beginning of the year and lavishes them with A's and affection and is just very mean to either everyone else or a specific group of people who they've decided are bad and problem students. I've honestly never met one of these that you could like effectively deal with by being nice to them because it kind of just convinces them that you're a suck up instead of actually making them like you a little bit more. You can try that if you would like to, but if not, I would usually just suggest like don't engage. Just put your head down and be too smart to fail. I know this will be kind of hard if they're specifically targeting you, especially in the kind of subject that is a little bit more subjective, like English, one of the subjects that I TA'd for. So your mileage may vary, but you can't really go wrong with just trying to be as smart as you can and just getting through it, moving on. Another thing you might consider trying, if this is one of those classes where a TA or somebody else is responsible for most of your grading, just like ignore the teacher, they don't matter, make friends and be nice to your TA, that way they won't absolutely decimate your grade just because the teacher doesn't like you. Last but not least, we've got the boring one, kind of like Professor Binns from Harry Potter, who just drones on and on and just puts everybody to sleep. One thing you can do is find some way to make yourself pay attention. Usually I just like to pick a fidget activity that isn't too distracting, like it still allows you to keep your mind on the material, while also preventing you from going on your phone or having your mind drift off. I have a lot of videos about how to stay focused for both online and in-person education, so check out the rest of my channel for advice on that. I also recommend asking them questions outside of class about the things that interest you or that maybe you didn't catch because you were starting to fall asleep. It's possible that this person just isn't that great at public speaking, but 
does a lot better in talking in an engaging and conversational manner in a one-to-one -one or small group interaction. Also, they might just be maybe a little bit older, a little bit out of touch with what is relevant to today, what students are actually currently interested in, and uh, asking them about the things that you find interesting will give them a better idea of what you actually want to know about. But if you still can't focus at all, we go back to the best favorite tip, which is to just find another resource to learn from. Anyways, that is everything for today's video. I hope you found some of this advice helpful and I upload lots of new videos on this channel about student life and you can check out my Instagram, my TikTok, and my second channel for some other, perhaps non-study related content. See you next time.